We're doing the intro to this video after I already did the video and thought about it and, and decided I wanted to, to talk about this. This video that I'm fixing to do, we're talking about leverage and the speed of bits. This is a straight up rebuttal to Daniel Defend. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not calling him out and saying that he's doing something wrong. I'm, I'm just pointing out that he's thinking of it in, in the wrong state of mind. Um, I called, I was just got off the phone with a physicist and explained what all I was talking about. And, and I was just trying to figure out the leverage, actually the leverage of this bit, cause it's a weird little leverage, weird measurements on it. And she said, uh, she said, Oh, yeah, that guy's straight up talking about lifting a rock with a board. You're talking about a whole system that that works differently. And she said, the speed of the leverage, the leverage isn't even part of isn't even part of what's going on. It's not even something you need to worry about. And I said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I I get it. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's what this video is going to be about. Okay. <clears throat> So I found in the last little bit, I've been talking about bridles with a whole range of different people. Uh, there's an artist that's that's asking me a lot of questions about bridles, and we're trying to we're trying to do some stuff and figure some things out uh, for drawings. And I've got a couple of clinicians that that have asking asked me things, and then then I go and. I say what I think and then I've got to go and talk to guys that I know that have more experience than I do and, and it's just been kind of funny to me that this is all all going on at once. Um, all of these people have, have got me in these conversations about bridles. And what I'm finding is that a whole lot of people think of a bit as a shank or a mouthpiece but not as a shank and a mouthpiece. They're not thinking of a bridle as, as the whole system in one piece. They're trying to break it up and change it around. And that's how you end up reinventing the wheel and getting things that don't work. Um, and, and the system thing, Frank Barnett says that a method is how we do things. A system is how we do things with logic. So, we, we want to look at bits as a system. We want to look at them in a logical manner and look at the fact that it all works together. It has to all work together. So whenever you get to talking about bridles, um, it seems like most people really catch on to the mechanics of it real real quick. But you, you always, you're always going to run into somebody that's a, a little misguided in their physics. They, they've got just enough education to, to get in their way. And they start talking about um, leverage and this and that and the other thing. And and, I, and I'll tell you a story. I'll make it a short one. I'll try to. Um, I, this is probably, yeah, because I was 20. So this was 20 years ago when I finally had a horse that was worth putting the effort into of making a bridle, bridle horse out of. And some of you might say, well, they're all worth the effort of putting, making a bridle horse out of them. And, a lot of y'all haven't rode the kind of horses I rode when I was 20, and it shows. But I finally had one that was worth making a bridle horse out of, and I was thinking about bridles, and I got to thinking about leverage and this and that. And uh, I just wasn't educated enough to understand how it all worked. And so I called my sister, who's a professor, and she's not a physics professor, but I said, I need to get in touch with the physics department of your college and the uh, um, the builder guys. What do you call those builder guys? Nah, uh, whatever they're called. I'll think of it here in a second. Anyway, I got, got in touch with the two different parts of the college and we're talking about physics with, with these professors and, and I said, well, what kind of lever is faster? And uh, they went, Levers aren't, le speed doesn't matter with lever. That one lever's not faster than another. It's weight and, and load. And, and you apply that weight faster to the, to the workforce of it. You can speed it up, but a lever's not 
necessarily faster. So it, if you talk to a physicist about bits, which one's faster and you're talking leverage, they're going to go, huh? It's, so here's what, what I'm going to explain why I don't care about, I don't care about the leverage of a bit. That's not part of my thinking um, when I pick a bit for a horse and I'll, I'll explain why. We've got here <coughs> this little bit right here. This is a really good little bit. It's a, uh, it's just a grazer bit. This is a straight leverage bit, not a signal bit at all. And somebody went to the effort of, of kind of putting a California style on it. But this bit works off of the curb. It doesn't work off a signal. It's got tongue relief. And so when the bit does engage, the tongue goes up into this, this area here, this tongue relief area. And then right here, presses down on the bars of the horse's mouth. And it hurts. And that's why the, the horse responds to it. They, they move away from the pain. So with a bit like this, this would be the only kind of bit that you would consider the speed of the leverage. Because... The speed of the leverage determines how fast that curb, curb strap or curb chain engages the horse. This bit really doesn't do much of anything until that curb chain engages. Is that a good angle there? So when, when this bit is sitting in this horse's mouth, when I pull on the reins, yeah, there's some rotation there. But, but it's really the, the curb strap, which would be under here, engaging that, that then makes things start to happen. This bit, and believe it or not, has got the exact same leverage as this bit. The ratios are the same. This bit... As soon as I move it, the port lifts off, up off the tongue. So it sits in the horse's mouth. As soon as I move anything, that port lifts off the tongue. And that's the signal that I'm getting off of these bits. And so the reason this is faster is because it's center hung instead of forward hung. Now I'll show you. Uh, center hung means it's it's in the center of the shank there. This other one's center hung too. Another, and, and that's that's where we're, when we're talking about a bit, whether it's fast or slow, it's we're talking about center hung versus forward hung. This bit is forward hung. You see that the the bars aren't in the middle of the of the shank. I had one with this exact same shank that was center hung and it doesn't work. It's it, certain shanks go with certain certain ways of doing things. But this one is slower because of that hinge right there. And yeah we're talking nanoseconds but it's enough that a horse can tell the difference. When I engage this bit with the reins it's the same deal. It's, we're we're looking for the signal of the port right here lifting up off the tongue, but it's slower. You see there, and I'm holding it down, but it's slower because, show it this way. It's slower because it's got to engage that hinge first. So down here where we're, if we're even thinking about leverage or talking about anything, that moves an inch down here in this finger and I'm guessing there, that moves an inch before it engages this hinge and allows that port to lift up off the tongue. And so that's why I'm saying that this bit is slower <coughs> than this one. And again, I've got my different piles here. This is the same ratio, the same leverage ratio as this bit is, exact same leverage ratio. This one, since it's center hung, right here, as soon as I engage it, 
and you see it lifts up off the tongue. There doesn't, there's no, there's no in, inhibitor here. There's no hinge. There's no anything right here that has to, has to be engaged before it lifts up off the tongue. So that one's instantaneous. That lifts up off the tongue as soon as I engage it. This one, head still throwing us off. This one can't lift up off the tongue until that hinge gets engaged. Take another bit here. This is again the same ratio as those other two, the exact same amount of leverage out of this. It looks like it's way more bit, but it's the same amount of leverage. And you see this, this bit has got a lot of play in it. You hear a lot of those, a lot of spade bit guys, especially guys that like a Santa Barbara spade, they say, oh yeah, that, you gotta use that bit for 10 years before it gets broke in. And that's to get all this play in it. That's what guys that like Santa Barbara bits like is that play. And so there's a lot of room for, for rider error there. Uh, there's a lot of room for you to get excited and move your hand around when you didn't really want anything to happen. Um, and for, for the horse to learn that, oh yeah, Brett gets excited sometimes and pulls on the reins. I don't, I can ignore that. But that, that's a lot of, how far is that? How far is that going before that engages down here? Quite a ways. Before that engages, before that can lift up off the tongue, which is my signal. That's where the signal is, is, is the spade lifting off the tongue. The curb strap in this bit, if, if I'm dealing with the, the actual speed of the leverage in this to the point where my curb strap is engaging and I'm making this into a second degree lever, I, I've already, I've failed already. And not that that doesn't happen. That does. That does happen. Uh, every single one of us that uses a spade bit, yes, sometimes it is a leverage bit and we're, we're working off of the curb strap. That happens to every single one of us. But that's not the goal. The goal with a bit like this is to have the horse work off the signal of this, of this spade lifting off the tongue. And I guess I can go into another rant while I'm at it. Uh, people talk about pre-signal, signal, pre-signal. Pre There's no such thing as pre-signal. You can't have a pre-signal. You can have a single, a signal. You can have a primary signal. You can have a secondary signal. You can go on and on and on and on. But it's not a pre-signal. But there's a signal off of my Romel reins, and there there's a signal off of the adjustment of my chain when my chain moves, and then there's a signal off of all this action right here, that horse feels all that. And then there's the signal of that spade lifting off the tongue. And then if nothing has happened then, then we get the signal from the, from the curb strap. And then it also turns into a third class lever where we get a lot of signal off of the, the head stall too, where, where there's a lot of leverage involved in that. This cute little guy. Everybody's favorite little bit, and everybody goes, oh, I just love that bit. It's really, and, and this is a lot of bit. This sucker is pretty stingy. It has got the exact same leverage ratio as this one. And as this one. And as this one. So when you hear somebody say, Oh, a Las Cruces, a Las Cruces style bit. This is a Las Cruces. You hear somebody say a Las Cruces style bit is either faster or slower because of the leverage, because it's a high leverage bit. We got the same leverage. I just measured them. We've got the exact same leverage. So this is not faster or slower because of the leverage, because it's the same leverage. This is faster because it's center hung. This is slower because it's forward hung. This bit, same deal, and this is a this is a really tight bit, but like I say, you're losing nanoseconds, but you are losing a little bit before that lifts off the tongue for that hinge to engage. 
you see there. Where here, it's, if we can get it to hang properly with our chains on, our rigmarole on here, where here, it's instant because it's connected directly to the, to the uh, shank. So what else did I want to show about all that? Standing here wondering why I had this bit out. So this pile over here, they were two to one. This pile over here, and it's actually one to two. We all say two to one, but it's one to two. This pile over here with the, the big long Scary looking Santa Barbara. And then you're kind of run of the mill grazer that somebody California up a little bit. <clears throat> they were two and a half to one. So they both of those were a little bit higher leverage than these. This is uh, a little bit less than two to one. This is a, a lower leverage bit than all of the, all of them here. <clears throat> Again, it's center hung. You see it's right there. That's where the that's where the cannon goes into the cheek instead of being forward. Um, this is a fast bit, but it's a lower leverage bit than than all the rest of these we have here. But it's the same deal as we were talking about. Because it's center hung, as soon as I move that cheek at all, the spade lifts up off the tongue. Which is, which is why this bit is so fast. So you're mixing apples and oranges. If you're talking about leverage and speed, you're talking apples and oranges. I've got some high leverage. I've got some lower leverage. I've got a, here a real low leverage bit. And the leverage doesn't have anything to do with the speed of the bit. It's how it's hung, whether it's center hung or forward hung. And that's what I had to, to say about leverage and bits and uh, I've been thinking about this for four days and I had a whole bunch of other stuff I wanted to think about as soon as the camera turns on I forget all of it because I get all nervous but that's that that's what we know about bits <laughs>